Howdy folks, Spencer here, and on part two of my Build Theory Craft series, I am going to be taking a look at the new Excelsior 2 and showing you how to build the ship out for a few different build types. Now, chapters are going to be listed down below, but before I dive into the builds, I do want to just take a minute and go over some updates regarding the ship that may impact your decision on whether or not you should acquire it. So... A reminder, this is a lockbox ship. Those of us on PC are going to get access to it in the Infinity Lockbox on December 6th. And if you're on console, you'll get it probably sometime later in December or early January. And with this ship, since the initial blog announcement, um, they have went through and updated this to announce that it does have an innate cloak. However, this is just the standard cloak that you can't activate while in red alert. So um, basically is irrelevant and doesn't really matter. So we can ignore that. But the part that is going to impact your decision to buy this, at least for a few of you, is the fact that the actual ship model is larger than the other Excelsiors and because of that, Thomas posted on Twitter that this ship is not going to be kit bashable with the existing Excelsior skins. So what that means is that the, the skin of this Excelsior 2 cannot be used on the existing Excelsior versions in the game. Uh, so if you have the legendary Excelsior, it cannot use this skin. And likewise, you can't use the older Excelsior skins on this brand new Excelsior, apparently. So uh, just keep that in mind if you were looking to get this ship explicitly to kitbash it. Um, you cannot do that. So let's dive in to some of the builds that you could do on this ship. Now, a reminder, this ship has a Commander Engineer with Intel, a Lieutenant Commander Science with Miracle Worker, Lieutenant Commander TAC and Lieutenant Commander Universal. It is extremely similar to the legendary D7. Um, and many people have been arguing that this is actually like a downgraded version of the legendary D7, which I would have to agree with. This, this is a 4-4 cruiser that can't use dual cannons, while the legendary D7 is a 5-3 battle cruiser that can equip dual cannons and comes with a uh, battle cloak and the bridge officer layouts are very similar. Basically, when they were designing the Excelsior 2, they took the legendary D7's layout and they got rid of this Ensign Universal and moved that into the Lieutenant Science to make that a Lieutenant Commander Science. And then they put the Miracle Worker seat there instead of on the Lieutenant Commander Universal. So very similar layout wise, as you can see here with the comparison that I have over at the left side. Um, so you can do many of the builds that you would do on the Excelsior over on the legendary D7. So if you're wanting a better version of the Excelsior that would be unlocked account wide, consider the legendary D7 because that is available in the C store as part of the legendary captain, the legendary Klingon captain bundle. Um, then you can get that for 78 bucks during the bundle sales that they do. So let's get on to the first build here with the Excelsior 2, and we're going to do a Surgical Strikes build. Surgical Strikes has become quite a bit more popular in the last year with the, uh, with the Intel revamp that happened earlier in 2022, and the Vanguard Specialist trait from the legendary Jemadar attack ship, which will allow you to have 100% uptime on Surgical Strikes. So for the first seat here that I'm going to work on, it's going to be the Commander Engineer with Intel. And the first ability that I would put there is Emergency Power to Engines 1. Now, the reason I use Emergency Power to Engines 1 on basically every build I do is because of the Emergency Con Hologram Duty Officer. This is a duty officer that you can get from the Phoenix store. It costs like one very rare Phoenix token on each character you want it on. And basically every time you hit Emergency Power to Engines, it is going to reset the cooldown on your evasive maneuvers. So many of you have probably heard um, the concept that speed is DPS and 
having the ability to get your evasive maneuvers up more often is a significant speed boost that is going to allow you to get to the next point of the map quicker and just have better maneuverability with your ship. So that's why I'm going to run that. Next up is going to be override subsystem safeties too. This is an Intel ability and the reason I'm running this is because it is a, it is a bit of a power boost. So let me bring this up in game here for you. So override subsystems safeties too can get you a fairly large power boost and it does have the downside that it does knock a random subsystem offline for a couple seconds at the end of it, but it's increasing your max power cap while it's active and giving you a bit of power. So this can take your weapons up from like 125 power up to 165. It's pretty good. Now you could also run rank three of this and emergency power to weapons too which I'm going to do emergency power to weapons three on this build. Um, but you can swap those two around if you want. The, the difference is extremely small. And of course, being we're doing surgical strikes, we're going to do surgical strikes three. Now for the Lieutenant Commander Science with America Worker, I'm going to do tractor beam one um, because that is a very low cooldown unconventional systems proc. Unconventional Systems is a personal space trait where every time you hit a control ability, it will reduce the cooldown of all of your universal consoles by 7%. So it is very nice to stack up a couple uncon abilities on your build. So let's go with Tractor Beam. Tractor Beam 1, so that's one uncon proc. And then being this is a Miracle Worker ship, we're going to take advantage of the America Worker abilities. So we're gonna do narrow sensor bands two and mixed armaments synergy two. So we've got narrow sensor bands, which is going to give you a damage boost for your energy weapons, depending on how close to the target you are. And then we have mixed armaments synergy two, which is going to get you a damage boost for firing, um, you know, a, a a different weapon type while it's active. So if you fire a torpedo off while mixed armament synergy two is active, that is going to give you a fairly sizable 40% damage boost for your beam rays. And likewise, if you fire your beam rays, you're giving your torpedo, you know, a really large damage boost. So that's a very good damage boost to have on. And if you're running, if you're running it, you're going to run either a torpedo or like a turret just to make sure that it's up very quickly. For the Lieutenant Commander Tack, keep in mind that we have surgical strikes on, so we don't need beam overload, uh, fire at will, anything like that. So we would do chemosite one. And for the next one, we could do like distributed, or actually no, we would do Attack pattern beta one here. And then we would do, I imagine most of you would probably have like a torp on. So you'd probably do like seven beam arrays plus like a dark matter quantum. So we would do torp red three. And now for this Lieutenant Commander Universal, you do actually have quite a few options. You could make this a science for more um, to, to give you more room for more uncon abilities and to also bring a grav well in. That would be a really good idea. Um, you don't really need another tack here because you've got surgical strikes on. So with surgical strikes, you can't run fire at will, beam overload, um, cannon scatter volley, cannon rapid fire because you can't run those at the same time as surgical strikes. You... You've got the torp spread on, so you don't need any other stuff for torp, so you don't need another tack. Your options here are a science for more uncon, or even another engineer in this case. And the purpose of the another engineer is that you could run a bunch of intel abilities then. And in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do here. Let's make this an engineer. We're going to move the emergency power to engines and emergency power to weapons over to this. 
and we're going to run some Intel unconventional systems procs here. So we could do viral impulse burst, ionic turbulence, and EMP probe. And I think viral impulse burst can go in that Henson slot. So we'll run that viral impulse burst one and move the emergency power to weapons three over here. For the second engineer ability, you have a few different options. If you wanted to do like a half ox to bat setup, you could do that here. So you could do ox to bat one and then just run the three ox to bat DOFs and then like a Boimler. You could do directed energy modulation, but if you're running Boimler, um, might be worth running like auxiliary to inertial dampeners, um, auxiliary to structural integrity field. Those don't drain your ox power, but those still give you, so ox to structural integrity field is a heal. Um, auxiliary to inertial dampeners would be a speed boost. You could also, from a DPS point of view, run directed energy modulation, um, directed energy modulation one here, and then you could run a DOF like Marion Francis Dolmer, which is a systems engineer. I think I have one of those on this character. Let me see. So there's there's a few different ways to build this out. So I don't have a Marion here. Let me pull one up on the exchange. Marion. So Marion Francis Dolmer. There's another version of it that might be cheaper, but when you hit directed energy modulation, this is going to massively lower your weapon power cost and give you resistance to weapon subsystem energy drain for eight seconds. So might be worth looking into to that. Um, because we have the emergency power to weapons three here, we can actually upgrade the OSS to overhead subsystem safeties three. And then we can run like ionic turbulence. I think the one goes there. So Ionic Turbulence 1 for another Uncomp Rock. Um, yeah, I think this would work really well because you've got your Mercy Powered Engines and Weapons for the EPTX chaining. Directed Energy Modulation with like a Marion would work. Or like I said, you could do Ox to Bat if you wanted. You could do Auxiliary to Structural Integrity Field, Auxiliary to uh, Inertial Dampeners. You, you have quite a few options for this second Engineer spot. But... With this, we have, let's see, how many Uncon procs do we have? We have Viral Impulse Burst, Ionic, Tractor Beam. So three, three fairly low cooldown Uncon procs there. Like, I, I think, I think that would work really well for, uh, for like a Surgical Strikes build. So I'm, I'll settle with that. Now for the Beam Overload build, I think it'd be fairly similar here. Um, except you're probably going to actually have fewer, fewer uncons. So let's, let's move this over to the beam overload area here. And for beam overload, I think I would go back to what I was originally doing on the surgical strikes set up here. And I would get rid of, um, like some of these Intel abilities I'd make this Lieutenant commander universal attack. And then just wipe that out move the OSS back down to OSS2 and do what I was initially doing with like EP to emergency power to weapons three. And instead of surgical strikes three, you could run like directed energy modulation three. You could also run another Intel uncon ability there if you wanted, but I'll just leave it like this. And we know we're gonna do beam overload three. Um, I'd also run a cannon scatter volley one. Um, the reason to run cannon scatter volley on a tor or on a beam overload build here is because it's a trigger for um, preferential. What is it? Preferential targeting. You find it here. Yeah. So if you have preferential targeting from the NX or the legendary NX, 
when you hit fire wheel or cannon scatter volley it will give 100 percent cat one damage to beam overload and cannon rapid fire so basically if you just have cannon scatter volley on your build and you hit it with this trait slotted it will give you that that damage boost so for the first ability here i've drawn distributed targeting one and that's basically what i would do for beam overload now unfortunately with this setup you only have one uncom proc and that's the tractor beam and at that point it is a question of do you even want to slot track do you, do you even want to slot unconventional systems so um you could move this tractor beam out and drop uncon if you wanted with this build you could also drop the directed energy modulation and pick up like a Nionic Turbulence 3, and that would at least take you up to two on cons. You, you could do that. Um, it's really up to you. And if you do drop the tractor beam here, you can run really whatever you want in that Ensign Science slot. That is entirely up to you. If you want to do like a hazard emitters for a heal, you know, whatever, it's entirely up to you. And it, like I said, if you want to increase this up to two on cons, you would just go through and take out this direct energy modulation for ionic turbulence three. Like that that's how I would change this if I wanted to run another on con. Outside of that, not really much else I can can do there. So that's how you'd set it up for beam overload. And for fire at will, it's gonna be very similar. So fire at will is gonna be very, very similar. In this case, you know, the uncon stuff would be nice, but I I guess like you're not worried as much about like maximizing DPS on a tank. Like OSS is nice, but I think in this case, I might might drop it. Um so I think I would do Reverse shield polarity three here. And then for the Lieutenant Engineer, you could do like Ox to Sif for the heal again. You could do um Bionic Tur you could run an Uncon here, which probably would be a good idea actually. So I guess we could do well actually what is the lowest cooldown? Intel Uncon. So viral impulse burst is 30 seconds. EMP probes 30 seconds. Ionic turbulence 30 seconds. So doesn't matter. I would do ionic turbulence because ionic turbulence has a debuff associated with it. So ionic turbulence one. So that's at least, you know, as a tank, you are also supporting your team a little bit. Let me take the DPS aspect out of that. Um, for the Lieutenant Commander Psy with Miracle Worker, running the, the, the plus damage Miracle Worker stuff doesn't matter as much with a, with a tank build here, in my opinion. Um, you could take the narrow sensor bands out and run another Uncon. In fact, yeah, you could make this build fairly heavy Uncon-wise. So... For the second uncon ability, you have a few different options, maybe like a jam targeting or scramble sensors like that. That'd probably work. Am I missing anything else here? I'd, I'd probably just do like a jam or scramble. I think that'd be the easiest. Um, some of you may worry about like the jam or scramble messing with your threat. They have such a low damage threshold to cancel them out that you don't really have to worry about it. Jam sensors, let's be scramble sensors one, and then of course a grab well three to help support your team and group things up. For the bridge officer setup on the tack here, we would of course swap over to beam fire at will three. You'd still have the torp spread three, and then you could drop the cannon scatter volley out for a cannon 
rapid fire. So you would be using um, ETM on a tank build in Twine Tactical Matrices from the Gagarin. And with that, you would be timing your torp spread to trigger that when your fire will goes down. And by doing that, you can have a fairly close to 100% uptime with fire will. It's a bit complicated, um, but I will include a link to a build from Jay. Which let me recently close tabs. So Jay over at STO Better has a really good tank build on the Odyssey where he goes over some of these concepts with like the, the ETM for extending your fire will uptime and all that he breaks, breaks down quite a bit. So I'll include a link to his build if you want to check that out and see his discussion on ETM there. So that would use ETM to, to get the fire will uptime higher. And the reason I'm going to do a cannon rapid fire one is because with ETM, you can't do cannon scatter volley because that would also trigger ETM. Um, so you need to do cannon rapid fire. And the purpose of having cannon rapid fire on there is to uh, be a proc for the fleet colony attack consoles. Um, if you're running any of the energetic protomatter attack consoles, then every energy weapon firing mode that you have on is a chance to trigger those. And you can't do cannon scatter volley because of ETM. So cannon rapid fire is what you have to do there because that won't interfere with your fire at will. And I'm going to keep attack pattern beta on. Um, at this point, every high-end tank build is running attack pattern beta because beta is debuffing every last thing that you hit. Attack pattern delta is only debuffing things that hit you. And there's a lot of static targets that don't shoot you. So using beta to hit and debuff everything greatly helps your team and overall has a higher performance potential. And also there's a set of board duty officers that you can go and grab quite cheap on the exchange um, that have a chance to give you, actually they have a chance to give you um, attack pattern Delta. So if you're still wanting attack pattern Delta, you can go through and get it from like a DOF, like 12 of 47 would be the one that triggers off of Intel abilities. So let's see what that cost. Yeah, here we go. 12 of 47. It's 10 million EC. Won't be after this video, but when you hit TAC or Intel abilities, it has a chance to give you attack pattern Delta. And there's different versions of these for different abilities. Like there's one for Delta or that will go off of temporal abilities. There's ones for going off of pilot abilities, Merc Worker, Command. The Command ones will be the most expensive usually because most of the high-end tanks do have a Command Seat. Um, but if you wanted to do it on the ship, you would either be using the Merc Worker ones or the Intel ones. So you could... I think it, you can only use one, so... Um, probably the 12 of 47 would be the best one here. And... That would be triggering off of all of your attack abilities or intel ones. So if we go back here, we have one intel ability, but then we have six different attack abilities. So you have quite a few chances here to trigger Delta on your build, and that will stack alongside your beta. So it's better for you as a tank to run the beta and then get the Delta through one of these duty officers. Another benefit of Delta or of uh, attack pattern beta is if you have the Delta operations expansion pack, you have access to a DOF called agent Nerul or agent IAL, depending on your faction, where every outgoing shot while attack pattern beta is up has a chance to heal you for a fair bit. So um, beta is what I'm going to recommend here. And uncon wise, we have four uncons. We have Tractor Beam, Scramble, Gravwell, Ionic, and if you wanted to, to get more cooldown reduction on this build um, for Bridge Officer abilities, if you didn't want to rely on just Boimler, you could drop Scramble Sensors for a Photonic Officer. That'd be perfectly fine, and you would still have three Uncon abilities. Um, and you have plenty of abilities here to trigger the, the Borg Doth or Delta. Now, one important note, though, if you are running one of those 
doffs to trigger um, attack pattern delta, those are fabrication engineers. So you are picking between those and an RSP extension doff. So just keep that in mind. That's usually not an issue for most of the high end tank builds now because most of them don't run reverse shield polarity at all. So that could be another thing you could mess around with and maybe get an additional uncon proc. Like if you did want to drop RSP, you could move the ionic turbulence up there, do ionic turbulence three, and then do like viral impulse burst one. And then that would that'd give you five uncon procs. So you have a few different options with how to build the ship out for a tank. Um, I know I definitely rambled on for a lot longer than I intended to here, but hopefully this has helped you figure out like how you would build out the ship in a few different ways. Like there's, there's quite a few options here, you know, um, quite, quite a few different ways that you could build this ship out. And I really, I, I would not recommend using anything other than beam rays on it. Um, I just think you'd largely be better off with going with a different ship if you wanted to do like dual beam banks, dual heavy cannons, you know, anything like that. Just use a better ship. Um, this ship is good, but it is really, really limited to these uh, beam array based options. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, definitely got a bit rambly, but if you're here, you know, I've, I've got the chapter to the, the summary here and these are where I would probably say like the finalized build options would be for me um, with regards to like surgical strikes, beam overload and like a fire at will tank. These all will work, um, but I do think that this ship is is not going to be the best for any of these build types. I think if you want to do surgical strikes, the legendary scimitar is a really great platform. If you want to do beam overload, the uh, the D7 Temporal, I still think, is the, the best option available um, for the premium ship options. Uh, Budget-wise, you know, like the, the Temporal Warships, even the Fleet Temporal Warships are going to do better than this ship, beam overload-wise. Um, and Fire at Will, I think any of your Command Cruisers are going to do a better job with regards to being a tank platform. You know, I, I think the legendary Odyssey, like with a build like Jay's, which I'll have linked down below, I think the legendary Odyssey, when it comes to tanking potential, is going to blow the Excelsior out of the water. Like, you can do a tank on it, it's just not going to be the most optimal thing ever. So I've been talking for a while here. I did not know, realize I was going to be about half an hour on this, so hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. But that's going to be it for me today. Again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. Stay tuned for more videos and uh, a reminder that on Tuesday, December 6th, I will be getting the Excelsior and messing with it live on stream. So if you want to stop by and see how this actually performs, to uh, stop by and see how I'm feeling about the ship and the console and the trait. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.